All right, so in this situation, our frames are either starting to fail or we're gonna be inevitably running into our opponents generating enough force that we feel like our shoulder is gonna start dropping to the mat. And so like I talked about earlier, we wanna always be on our sides so that we're able to effectively uh, use our frames with the right force vectors to be able to stop our opponent from advancing. But we always have that ability to use that space behind our shoulders to generate that momentum to rock to either side of our shoulders. That's what we wanna do. We don't wanna get pinned flat on our shoulders at any given point. It does happen, and we can come back from this, but from here, I'm trying to hold Kevin back and he's driving into me, and I'm, uh, shit. And once I'm flat on my back here, if he keeps driving into me, well, he's just gonna keep turning me away because my frames become levers once they switch from this angle and go pointing directly upwards. So what we're gonna look to do from here is move into the elbow push escape. So, my sh elbow, my shoulder is off the mat right now, and instead of dropping again, collapse right here, I wanna move with this. So if you feel like you're starting to collapse at this point, we wanna start accelerating that movement and going with it on our own terms rather than getting flattened out and reacting too late because it's on our opponent's terms. What I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna keep this arm blocking the cross face. This head is going to migrate underneath my opponent's armpit. So here, underneath, forming an X here down at the elbow. My elbow can be still reinforcing against his chest if I want to, but it's not necessary. I'm creating an X here with my forearms and I'm extending my forearms out. From here, it's really important that our opponent is constantly driving into us so that their center of gravity is actually gonna be shifting to the other side. From here, I bring his arm across my head and once it's past my head, the arm that was blocking the cross face can now come out and go right to the elbow. So it's going straight to like about the elbow point or just at the very bottom of the triceps, not up at the forearm, and I'm not at the shoulder. I want the lever to his shoulder here. You can grab the gi, but honestly, like this escape works really good gi and no gi by just going straight to the actual mechanical end of the lever rather than trying to grab the gi in which we might slip off the side and kind of lose this. My arm is locked out. And with that momentum, I'm gonna to look to sit up with this. So as I'm here, see how my shoulder's dropping right now as I'm doing this motion right here, I'm flat on my back, but I got that momentum carrying me through. So now I push, my feet are generating base by pulling into the ground as I perform basically a Turkish getup to then build here up onto my elbow. My chest is pointing out this direction, my hips, my face, everything in this direction so I'm in proper posture and that I have force generating through my arm, through both shoulders, into my elbows. So see, this is a pretty good angle to see how I'm relatively straight right here. I'm not like this. I'm not like this, getting collapse. I'm trying to hold him back. So if Kevin drive into me hard right now, well, everything is supported through bone into the ground. From here, I'm now able to, because of how open up the space is on the left side of his body, generate base with my feet, hip through and come back to either a seated or a recumbent guard on my back. Once again guys, super important that your opponent's actually driving into you. If Kevin's sitting back right now and I'm like, I want the elbow push, <laughs> and I try and just pull him across the other side, it's not going to work. That would be my time to start looking at using my frame and hip escapes. But I'm here and he really doesn't like this. He's driving into me hard. I'm starting to get collapsed. I feel he's driving into me. I go with this. I use this momentum against himself. Here, arm underneath, creating this X. If I take this arm out now and try and block to his elbow, he's just gonna cross face me. Crap. I need to make sure I carry this with these frames across. Now he can't cross face me. Elbow. From here, starting to generate. If you feel like you can't get up from here because he's just really heavy, we bring our legs up and we rock into base. I am looking to push him outwards, roughly a 45 degree angle here because I'm looking to open him up away from me. From here, into base onto my elbow. The elbow gives me more hip mobility. From here, hipping away through that space to get back to guard. Very common for your opponent to start performing an air guitar motion. If I am here, and I start pushing this, and he starts performing this air guitar, I keep with him a little bit here, 
because he's going to be trying to take away this pressure. I want to keep regulated tension in which I'm staying very connected to my opponent. I'm going to sit up with him and I'm going to frame to his shoulder. Now from here, I hip away. If I keep connection to his elbow and he circles all the way around, my elbow, see how it's pulled behind me now? It's putting pressure into my shoulder that's uncomfortable and now it's starting to create leverage to my back shoulder where there's no post and I'm going to get pulled down. So I can't keep this control. Here, bring it across, elbow push, he starts to perform the, that limp arm or air guitar, and I fill this space, I build up onto my head if I need to, to frame the shoulder, try and control me count. Very strong, through that hipping, that motion. The elbow push can be used against certain passes, it can be used against side control where opponents just already got the elbow drifted to the mat. For example, if Kevin's in side control on this side, and it has his elbow posted here, this elbow on this side, and I'm able to form a walkout with my arm here, I'm gonna be able to generate base and start framing this elbow and starting to escape through that space. Very difficult when your opponent's gonna be super heavy with their, their center of gravity and they're not giving you that momentum, but it can still be done. Very important thing is that you keep that arm locked up. Common mistake, I was just teaching this last night in class. As people are trying to sit up their arm Bends. And if your arm bends, you're now trying to use muscle to support your opponent rather than bone, and you're just going to get collapsed. So from here, as I'm pushing Kevin, if I feel like I can't sit up from here, it's really tempting to bend your arm and be like, well, now I have space. But now he's just going to collapse you. Make sure, if you can't sit up from here, that I keep this arm locked out before all outs, and I start to look to generate base here as much as I can. If we're in this position, I cannot sit up, and he starts to perform a proper limp arm from here, then I use that space to go right back to our frame and hip escape. I've created the space I need you to get back to here, so then I'm gonna be able to go through all the other escapes that we need to. All we need is space to be able to mobilize our hips. That limp arm air guitar motion that our opponent uses is always gonna create a massive amount of space. Use that to either finish your escape or get yourself back to the proper position that you need to be successful with the previous escapes we've gone over.